transmission energy levels. So this, everything here is in nanometers. So we're going to be calculating this wavelength right here. So if we plug this in, we're going to have one over our wavelength is equal to 1.097 times 10 to the 7 over meters or meters to the minus 1. I'm going to put it in as meters to the minus 1. Now, I looked at a, I looked at some tests. I looked at a test last night. There was not one single unit in the entire test. And the person did not have the test, by the way, but I don't write units down, so you can just skip it. Right. <laughs> okay, then this is going to transition down. Remember, this is level two, it's going to transition down to. If we're going to see this little light, it transitions back up to level two. So this is going to be one over two squared. Let's just put one over four minus at that energy level six. So if we put our six in here, let's square it right away. And six squared is going to be 36. Let's put it in that way. Okay, so there's our equation. Let's figure out this right side. So figure out this right side. I don't have my calculator here. So grab my calculator. Please grab your calculator. Calculate in that right side. I see the state with that calculator. So I would do this one over four minus one over 36 first. And literally, I'm going to put in that way with no parentheses. So I'm going one divided by four minus four divided by 36 equals or two, 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 two. That's my parentheses. I'm now going to multiply it by the rigorous constant. So I'm going times 1.097 equals. This is the number I get. Somebody else get this number? Yes. All right. So now one over the wavelength is two four three seven seven seven. I'll just put eight for now and I'm not worried about six bits yet. And then we just need to flip this. So to solve this, and this is still meters to the minus one, then one divided by that number. Two, four, three. I'm just writing this down to just fill in my calculator. So the best way to do this, this is meters to the minus one, which can end up in meters. The best way to do this is use your answer key. So I'm going one divided by down here is my answer key, or you could have a store key. So I'm going to hit second because it's in a different color from my answer. So I'm going, I'm bringing my previous answer back up. It looks like that. And as soon as I hit enter, I'm going to have my answer in meters. This is in meters. So we've got 4.10. Times 10 to the minus seven meters. And if we convert that to nanometers, nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine. One nanometer, one times 10 to the minus nine. We could do this right here with nanometers set. That will finish it off. But if you look at the answers, there's only one possibility, right? Okay, let's see. So that will be out number four. We're going to look at 18 next. For 18, this is our electron configuration notation. Um, so this is S2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So I would just look perhaps at this point, we could look at our blank periodic table. And if we look at our blank periodic table, where's our 3s1 ending? Or we go 
got a regular periodic table, I guess. This is 1s1, 2f1, and ends in 3s1 has to be sodium, right? Again, 1s1, 2f1, 3s1. So that looks to be sodium. 24 is 23 is the temperature. 23 is the next one. Um, if we write this out, this ends in 3s2, 3p2. So where am I at on my periodic table? 3s2, 3p2. And if we look at our blank table that we did last time, yeah, we want to go off with the blank table. 3P2. 3P2 gets me right here. This is what it ends in 3P2. So I am in group 14. And I'm in period one, two, three. So, or column 14, what are the choices here? The only thing in column 14 is a choice, right? Okay. Let's see where we left off. We did our, well, we left off right here. We did this blank periodic table. And last time we did electron configuration notation, and that looks like this thing right here. So we're going to continue right here and expand this. So this is page 16 on the printout. Okay, so let's continue this. We want to fill this out. This would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. I did the copy in what I have up above. I only need two more electrons in the one above. So after 2p6, 3s1, right? And for magnesium, I only need one more electron than the sodium up above. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And so on. I'm going to fill this in for that here 3s2, 2p1. I'm just going to fill this down to at least 14 so we can go, we can do painless electrons. Should have told you to complete this the last class, but.
Now, you might say, well, this kind of thing, why are we just repeating all that? There's got to be a shorthand way to do it. And yes, there is a shorthand way to do it. So, the electron configuration notations on your periodic tables. So, if we look right here, here's 1s1 for hydrogen. If we go over to helium, we have 1s2. The shorthand way to do it is to use the previous noble gas configuration and then add to it. Everything in group 18 here is the noble gas. So when I go to lithium number three, it's going to have helium in parentheses, which stands for the 1s2, and then it just adds to it. So 1s2, and then for lithium, it is 2s1. Turn this light in. William then is helium in brackets to S2. And that continues until we get to neon. Once we reach neon, it has 10 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Number 11, which is sodium, is going to have neon in brackets. So when I move this to sodium number 11, it has the configuration of neon and brackets, and it simply adds to the other one. So now if I go all the way across my table to argon, we have neon and brackets, 3s2, 3p6. So when I go to number 19, potassium, it's going to have argon and brackets when I go to the next one. Now realize what is the ending electron configuration for these noble gases? 1s2 here, but all the other ones are S2P6, right? S2P6, 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 S2P6. And S2P6 is eight electrons total, right? That is the magic number. Atoms want to gain, lose, share electrons to get eight electrons, just like the noble gases. Then they are more stable. And these noble gases do not want to do anything with the electrons. So they do not make compounds. We do not make neon nitrate, argon nitrate, neon chloride, argon chloride. So if we cheated here on this, and wrote the no gas configuration. It would be this one. This is our first noble gas, so this would be the same as two S two two D two. If we go down here. Is the same electron configuration notation as O gas neon. And then we just add 3s1. I'll put this in there soon. As we go down, Let's go down to the Townsend here. So for potassium, this would be the same as argon. Simply add four as well. And so on. Okay, let's do valence electrons. 
So we got a column here for valence electrons. So our valence electrons are our outer level, farthest out electrons that react. Now, everybody's done the periodicity lab that ended their Monday's lab, or you did it last week. Sodium, or lithium, sodium, potassium. In that lab, lithium gives up one electron. Sodium gives up one electron. Potassium gives up one electron, right? What charge do they take on? Positive one, positive one, positive one, right? If then you did magnesium, calcium, and you did aluminum, but if magnesium reacted, it's a plus two ion, calcium, a plus two ion. If reacted, plus three ion. So we're going to talk about that. It's these outer level valence electrons that react. So if fluorine reacts, it's not going to involve any of this. This 1s2 electron close to the nucleus is not going to be involved at all. It's going to be these outer electrons that are involved. Sodium is not going to be any of these inner core electrons that are called the core electrons. It's going to be this one electron way out here in the 3s. Potassium is the one electron out here in the 4s. So the valence electron then is. This valence electron are your higher level S and or P electrons. For insured goals, for the highest level, which is just the furthest out from the nucleus, S and or P electrons, if they match, some textbooks will do unfilled B e and Fs as well. So I will show you one example of that, but otherwise, we're going to stay away from it. So for valence electrons, highest level, you're just looking for the highest number, which is your farthest out level, S, and then sometimes there's going to be P electrons to go along with it, sometimes there's not. So if we have hydrogen, how many valence electrons do we have for the cell? Well, we only have this one electron. So that is our valence electron, this number one. For carbon, how many valence electrons do we have? Farthest out, we'll get two S, right? We've got two here and two there. Farthest out, S and P. That total here is four. Two there and two there. Fluorine, farthest out, S and P's. The fluorine should be seven, right? Seven here, let me zoom in. We're going to have seven for chlorine. How many for sodium? Three S1, right? One valence electron. Sodium. Magnesium. You got off the level three, right? So magnesium is going to have two. Three. Sulfur's gonna have six. Chlorine's going to have seven. Potassium is going to have calcium. T 
two. Iron. What's the farthest out we got to? Press two, right? Four S two. So most textbooks are going to say two. Some will have this on two. So you might see eight. I don't like that, but. If you did the unfilled B, you would add the six to it and you end up with eight. But this is our best answer. Okay, in 12, we get the level four, three D tents filled up. We don't care about that. We've got F2 here, P4 here. So we've got six. Krypton is no gas in group 18, so we've got 4s2 or b6. Right? We're look, just looking for our highest level. Okay, Krypton is no gas. And for this one, we get to level five, right? We get to level five, so we're looking at five here, and we've got two in the F and three in the P. So five valence electrons. Yeah, you know, it's a noble gas. How many is a noble gas going to have? Eight, right? Eight. Okay. Well, let's cheat on this. For number 15, the only ending is going to be, everything's going to be the same. And this is going to be five piece sticks, right? Okay, now let's go to the next page. So the next page, I was trying to make everything print out perfectly in my learning guide, as I call it. I really should call it a mini textbook, I guess. I did get my butt absolutely handed to me trying to make this go perfectly. I got my butt kicked. I spent a lot of time, and finally I said, I can't keep the time on this. Uh, it does take a lot to try to get it to print in landscape, all this one document. But, okay, each one of these boxes is an orbital. How many electrons can I put in an orbital? Maximum, two electrons, right? Each one of these boxes represents, let me back up to my color diagram here. One of these orbitals. Okay, I can put two here, two, two, two. Remember, I can do P6, right? Each one of these boxes represents one of these orbitals. So, this one through 16 here, goes together with our previous one through 16 here. And we're actually going to put in electrons now. And so right here, this is 1s1 for the hydrogen, number 1s. For number 2, it was carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. I just want you to realize that this again, this one through 16 goes with this one through 16. Okay, now we are going to represent electrons with arrows. And we use either an up arrow or a down arrow. Now, we know the electron is spinning. And if I handed you a basketball, and every one of you have tried this at one time, I'm thinking you try to spin in the basketball on one finger, most people use the middle finger. So you are my number one chemistry students, but truthfully, you see people that flip it this way and they'll keep the middle finger up and they can go like this and they can give it a spin, or they could rotate it the other way and then flip 
put it this way, right? But you have two choices, correct? You can either spin, we can say clockwise this way, or counterclockwise this way. So the electron is spinning, and the arrows actually represent a magnetic field. So let's just leave it at that. The electron spins, and that spin gives it magnetic properties. So you can have south pole magnet attraction, or you can have north pole magnet attraction. Okay. So they can spin clockwise or counterclockwise. And we're going to leave it at that. We represent that spin with an arrow. So the electron is represented with an arrow, and the spin is represented by pointing up or down. And this is actually counterclockwise spin. So if we have 1s1, we have one electron in the 1s orbital, correct? There's one electron in there. We don't know if it's spinning up or down. Let's just call it that. You could put it down. You don't know. So let's go to carbon. How many electrons can I put in an orbital? Two electrons, right? So my 1s2, if you put two electrons in the same orbital, they've got to be spinning opposite direction. So for 1s2, we do this. Do not get ahead of me now. Do not get ahead of me. For 2s2, we would do this. Now here is our, now it's time to grab, grab our, And this will help out. So there's three different P orbitals, right? And I'm just going to go on the outside here. So I can follow now. Here's my P. I'm going to go across to my next P because these are not in perfect order. I'm going to outline my P's in blue. There is my three P. These are not in order. Here's my four P. Again, I'm just going to do it in blue. I've got my five P over here. But really, would help. I certainly yellow just did my S. My S. 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 Yellow from my L is my S. He's on an outline in a different color. Just to get some separation, it's just going to be here. This is just a little bit easier. So I've got something that looks like this just to keep track of which level I'm in S, P, D, or F. All right, now four's not longer. So, I don't know. And of course, this is my S as well. My S is yellow. So now, for my carbon. 1s2, 2s2. Mm, that's a 2. For carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2v2. Now, we have three p orbitals right here. We've got px, p, 
PI, PZ. We need to put two electrons in there. We've got three of these dumbbell shaped orbitals. We need to put two electrons in there. Do not fill this, do not get heavy enough. We have to do this according to Hun's rule. We have to do this according to Hun's rule. And I'm going to put Hun's rule right here. Hun's rule basically says this one electron. Orbital. This is the key. of the same spin. Four pyramids. You might say, what the heck does that mean? I'll show you what it means. It's been each orbital of the same spin before parent. Now, let's just say we have 2 b one We have 2 b one All of these take the same energy to put an electron in there. You have no idea which one it's going to go in. No idea. But for our purposes, we're just going to do it from left to right so you can compare answers with everybody else. Hans rule basically said this. If we have P3 so I'm making three different P orbitals. If you have P3, it has to look like this. One electron in each orbital of the same spin before they pair up. The same spin, they have to point the same direction. So you could have three individual arrows up or the opposite of that would be three arrows down, right? So P3, you got three. Individual arrows up one electron in each orbital. We can call this X, Y, Z, right? Those are the three different P orbitals. And Hans rule also works with D's and F's. So let's say you had D4. Now we need to do five D orbitals. So one, two, Three, you always split the last one to get two for the last line. So here's four, five. Five different D orbitals, right? So if you had D4, if you ended in D4, four, five are going to have one electron in them. You don't know which ones, but again, for our purposes, we're going to go from left to right. We're going to leave this right one blank. So if you have a D4 according to Hunt's rule, you could do this. Four individuals down or four individuals up. But they have to match, right? Of the same spin, they have to match. So that's not so bad for Hunt's rule, right? And if you end up with a P3 like this, that's half full, this is really stable. If you ended up with a D5 like this, this is really stable. A half fill sub level of all the things spin makes it pretty stable. Okay, so let's go back to this. Now we have 2P2. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to put one here up, and I'm going to put one here up. And I'm going to circle this. You do not have to do this. And I'm going to write that they have to be the same. By saying they got both stings, both points up and both can be down. Okay, if we do the next one, 
on our sheet, I believe it is fluorine. One S2, two S2, two S2, two S2, two five, I believe is the next one. Yes. So this ends, I'm just going to put the end, in the end of 2P5. This one ends in 3S1. This one ends in 3S2. So on. But if this is 2P5 for this one, it would look like this. Now, you might want to do 2P3 like this to get used to it. That's 1S2, 2S2, 2P3. Then we have to add two. Again, you don't know where they go, but for simplicity, let's do the first two. And I'm going to circle that, meaning that you could have that one pointing the other way. If you started with down, down, down first, right? If you started with down, down, down first, this one could be going down. Okay, this one's 1S2. One so we can go up, down. 2S2, two two, we can go up, down. Then it's 2P6. This is going to be full. I don't know if you want to go to Hans rule as you build in. Here's my P3, P4, P5, P6. It's full. Then we have 3s1 electron. We're just going to put an electron in here. It doesn't matter which way. One electron, either up or down. I'm just going to circle it, meaning that it could be going down, right? Opposite state. Number five. It ends in 3s2. So let's just fill this up. Ends in 3s2, it's going to look like this. Huh? Okay. That's about like a bigger horse. Let's go down to number 14 that we have written out. I think we have 14 written out on the previous page, right? 14 is where we ended. Pretty sure we have 14 written out. So I'm going to come down here to 14 just to show you that I, uh, in 16, I'm going to have to clarify as well. So we'll probably have to write it out. So for 14, actually, it would help to write 14 down here a little bit. 14, 15, and 15. Some of these ending electron configuration notation. Uh, for 14, for 14 down here, this is the same as the previous page, but for 14, out the last part of it, we've got 5S2, 4D10, 5P3. So we got to get 5P, we got to fill up the 4D. So for 14, for sure, we got 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, let's fill up 2P6. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, opposite spin. 3S2, 3P6, 4. after 4S2 is 3D10, so 3D10, 
I'm going to fill it up according to Hun's rule. There's D3, D4, D5. And six, seven, eight, nine. And here's three D ten. Then four B six. After four B six. 5s2. Oh, 4d10. We fill up 4d10. This ends in 5p3, which is right here. This ends in 5p3. We're going to have to have three up or three down. Now, I don't quite have enough for 16. For number 16, you can fix this up for number 16 so we can get 16 right here. Does 16, this would be a 5D. Six p for number 16. Then we'll be able to do 16. It's the best I can do. Okay, so we can put two electrons in each orbital of opposite spin. But they have to fill it according to Hunt's rule. One electron. This should make sense now. One electron in each orbital of the same spin before pairing up. Right. One electron in each orbital of the same spin. Okay. So try to finish this up. You should be able to look at somebody else's then uh, since we're filling it up from the right. So try to finish this up. Do the last two electron configuration notations. Put in your valence electron for this. Okay, now it's time to do quantum numbers. It sounds very complicated. I'm going to estimate in 13 minutes you're going to master quantum numbers. Estimate 13 minutes, we're going to have a good handle on quantum numbers. All right, to do quantum numbers, now notice this is chapter seven, so I, I think I told you to poke around in chapter seven out. So this will get you put away to the chapter seven out. So, Hun's rule we talked about. All the exclusion principle I'm going to come back to. Now, quantum numbers. Quantum numbers tell us exactly what level we are in. Let's say level two. It tells us exactly what sublevel we are in, S, P, D, or F. It tells us exactly which orbital it's in, and it tells us which way the electron is spinning. That is four numbers. It works like this. We'll put it right here. They put it in parentheses. There's an N. There's an L. There's an M sub L like this, and an M sub S. So, Quantum numbers. There's four numbers to describe each electron. The first one right here, pretty simple. This tells us what level we are in. And those level numbers, or I should say energy level, 
That goes one through seven for our periodic table. We got up to level seven when we did our blank periodic table. Next number here tells us our sub level are just locked in sub level. Zero if you're in F, one if you're in P, two if you're in a D, and three if you're in an F. That's just locked in. So, so far, if I'm talking this electron right here, my first number is a two, because I'm in energy level two, correct? My first number is a two. My next number is a zero, because it's in an S. If I was talking this electron, my first number is a two, because I'm in level two, but my second number is a one, because it's in a P. Right? Okay, now, the third number tells you the exact orbital. This goes from minus L plus L. Oh, what the heck? It's not a very good looking L, by the way. But that's an L. Let me see if I can. Yeah, do a little better. Now, what does that mean? If we are in a P, if we're in a P sub level, my previous number is a one, right? If I'm in a P, this number right here is a one. It's just given for a P, it's a one. Then to tell us the exact orbital that we're in, we number these minus one, zero, and plus one for a P. So for a P, it would have been minus one, zero, and one. If we're in D, one, two, three, four, five. This is a D. What's my previous number? A two, right? My previous number is a two. So to tell which exact orbital that electron is in, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. And if I'm in an F, I need seven. One, two, three, four, five, four, six, seven. And then if I'm in an F, my previous number is a three, and I would be going minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. Number is just spin. That's either plus or minus one half. So I do an up arrow if it's going 
counterclockwise. Minus plus one half. Or we go down arrow. Oops, I did this in the wrong way. This is counterclockwise. You don't have to. It's either plus one half or minus one half. Or down arrow. There's a lot more to it for spin. It's called spin 720 and stuff like that. There's a lot more to it. But that plus one half minus one half. Okay, let's do the quantum numbers then for these electrons right here. So if I do this electron, parenthesis, I'm going to do four numbers for it. What level is it in? It's in a level one, right? The second number is fixed. Zero for S, one for T, two for D, three for F. Zero for S. The next number, I didn't put it up here, but if this second number is at zero, my third number would go from negative zero to positive zero or zero. And my spin is right. Oh, if I do this electron, what level am I in? One. My second number zero for S, one for P, two for D, three for F. Zero for an S. Minus one half, right? The only difference is the spin of the electrons in there, correct? So how many electrons can there be in common? Three. Which gets us to the Pauli solution principle. Which states this no more than two electrons can be assigned to the same orbital. And if there are two electrons in the same orbital, they must have opposite spins. This leads to the general statement that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. They could have three in the same, right? But that's kind of the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, let's do this. We're going to do both these electrons. We're going to cheat when we get. We're going to do both those electrons. What level are we in? Level two. Second number is zero for S, one for P, two for D. Zero for S. Third number has to be an F. Both the electrons we can kind of cheat like this and do plus and minus one half would be both the electrons. One's plus one half, one's minus one half. All right, let's do this electron. Four quantum numbers to describe this electron. What level are we in? Level two, right? We're in level two. The next number is fixed. Zero for S, one for P, two for D. One for the P, right? We're in a two P, one for the P. Next number goes from negative one to positive. Next number tells us the exact orbital. It's in negative one, right? 
So my third number tells my tell me my factorial negative one. And the last number is one half. I don't know if you have to put the plus in there and give one half of the same plus and see if it gives you my Okay, let's do this one. Right now. Well, two, second number is fixed, zero rest, one for P, two for D, one on one, that's all the same. This time we're at orbital zero, and the spin is still one half, right? How's this? Is it clicking? Should look at the clock. Uh, it's going to be about right. 12, 14 minutes. That's all it takes here for fun. Sounds complicated. This all looks complicated, but let's do this one. This you like to run right here. What level are we in? Oh, five, right? Five, that's one. So five, then what? Zero, zero, and one half, right? Five, zero, zero, one half. Let's do this one right here. What level are we in? We're in level four, right? This is five, that's one, four, B, five. So this is level four. The next number is zero for S, one for P, two for D, right? The next number is fixed, two for D. Third number is going to be from negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Again, my third number tells us the exact orbital. It is in negative two, right? And the spin is one half. Let me do this one right here. Uh, let's keep it going down below. So if we do this electron, or two, correct? We're still on level four. Two for the D. Negative one. One half, right? The only difference is going to be this middle number every time, correct? It's in the same level, level four. It's in the same sub level D. All we're doing is the same spin. So as we go to the next one, the only difference is going to be the exact orbital. Good. Okay. Now let's go back and explain uh, a little bit on our periodic table. If we go back here to our blank periodic table, and this works about 90% of the time. 
you can never trust an electron to do what you think it's going to do. So there's always exceptions. So we can rock and roll through this. We're doing really well. I'll show you this. So your periodic table has the electron configuration notation on it. So 4F1, 4F2, we're doing well. 4F2, 3D1, we're doing well. 4F2, 3D2, that's exactly what we predicted. 4F2, 3D3, that's exactly what we predicted. And then we get to this, 5F1, 45. So one of the electrons goes out of the S into the D, right? We would predict this right here to be 4F2, 3D4. 4 s 2 3 d 4 what we have predicted, what we have written down. Well, why is that? Well, you end up with a D5. And according to Hunt's rule, a D5 is half filled. All those electrons are spinning in the same direction. That's pretty darn stable. It likes that configuration. The next one down below does the same thing. One goes out of the S into the D. So you would think that would also work for tungsten, but look at you can never trust any electron. Just when you think tungsten is going to do the same thing, it doesn't. And I don't know why, but I could put into a radical and study that. But let's highlight this to make sure we know the difference between these right here. So I'm going to highlight these two. So we know we have it's not correct. So these are really S1 D5. My D5, one, two, three, four, five. My D5 would be look like this. This is half filled. What's the key term of why they do this? They can make themselves more stable. The most stable is a filled level. Most stable is a filled level, but if you get a half filled like this, so if we go over here, if we continue across, we end up with this. We think copper is 4F2, 3D9, but one goes out of the F, fills up the, the D, correct? Silver does the same thing. Gold does the same thing. I don't know. Ranking it down here. Who knows? But these three, one goes out of the S into the D to fill it up. So let's put that down here as well. So this worked with copper, silver, and gold. It's really S1 D10. One goes out of the S into the D to fill it up. Fill D, right? And then what's the key word again? It's more stable. Uh, you'll end up with some 
there's other discrepancies you can find um, as you went across. So those are the ones we can kind of easily explain until we get to the that I don't understand. Okay, now let's, we are well into seven here. And we finish up with what the lab talked about and what the lab talked about. And by the way, next semester we're switching the lab around because we should talk about the bids before we do the lab. So we're actually switching the labs around so that next week we will be doing periodic events. So the lab talked about chemical behavior and should have talked about this going down the group, the atomic size increases, and giving up that electron is easier as you go down the group. So potassium reacted quicker, starting on fire, more violent than sodium and lithium. Then it talked about ionization energy. And what is ionization energy? It's the energy needed to remove an electron. And going down the group, it gets easier to move, remove that electron. That electron's farther away from the positive polar nucleus. It's easier to give that up. And in group one, they give that up and they have a charge of positive one ion, right? Everything has a positive one charge. That's what's happening in lab. It's giving up an electron. Going across the row, ionization energy increases. Well, the opposite of that is electron affinity is adding an electron, the energy to add an electron. And then going down a group, electron affinity increases, and going across it decreases. So let's go ahead and put that on our periodic or our blank table. So on our blank table, we'll do this. So we'll go to our blank table and let's put an arrow down like this. So going down, we know for sure Atomic radius increases. As the atomic radius increases, it makes it easier to pull the electron away. So ionization energy increases. Then adding the electron is harder. So electron affinity is Now, let's see if we can put this right down. How do you do it? Going across. Have a mess. So, going across. 
from left to right. Down the radius. This is not perfect. Decreases. Ionization energy increases. Just the opposite. All right, let me update you on this quiz. If there's no class coming in, if you want to look at your test, we can do it right in here. If there's no class coming in, you want to stick around, I have them with me. Okay, you can do all of these except number. There's no one that I think you might not be able to do, but try to try all of these on these kids. Print out uh, the next chapter, I think eight and nine go together, right? So this was six and seven. Print out that next learning guide. Is there a class coming in? Anybody knows? There are people out there? 